Coming up on today's episode of AMA Drone Report, FAA reauthorization passes the House. Mexico considers tight drone licensing regulations. And FAA supports drone operations for Florence response. Hello, I'm Laura Hudson. Welcome to Airborne's AMA Drone Report on Aero TV, a weekly news program covering the recreational drone world in partnership with the Academy of Model Aeronautics, one of the oldest and most respected aviation organizations in the world, with more than 200,000 members and 2,400 clubs across the country. Despite the amazing and hard-fought efforts of the AMA and other pro-aviation organizations, the House has passed the FAA reauthorization bill, with language that concerns AMA a great deal. The House passed the bill Wednesday 398-23, to and is expected to also pass a short-term extension carrying the works through October 7th, in the event that the Senate can get its act together before the September 30th deadline. However, knowledgeable insiders expect the Senate to pass a long-term bill with strong bipartisan support. While many damaging provisions fought by the general and commercial aviation community were killed off, a number of severe restrictions that are counter to the interests of the model aviation community, a community that is responsible for inspiring much of aviation's most brilliant innovators, have passed with this bill. It's hugely disappointing but it means that the nature of AMA's mission is going to be even more critical than ever. Aero News boss Jim Campbell knows that this is a tough development, but AMA has proven itself to be one of the most effective organizations we've ever worked with, and it will be incumbent on them to continue to lobby, educate, and seek proper freedoms and regulations so that the model aviation community may continue to inspire the aviation innovators of tomorrow. We'll keep you updated. In the next show minute, let's take a brief look at a few of the shorter stories that are making the rounds of the small UAS and hobby drone communities. The FAA reauthorization bill just passed by the House contains language that would allow the government to disable drones that are perceived as a threat, including shooting them down. The language is included in a section entitled, Preventing Emerging Threats. It would allow the Department of Homeland Security and the FBI to track drones that are deemed to be a credible threat to a cover facility or asset. The authority was requested in August by DHS Secretary Kirsten Nielsen. While GoPro's Karma Drone program has bit the dust production-wise, the parent company has just updated firmware for the drone product so that the remaining vehicles can use the just-released and highly upgraded Hero 7 series of GoPro cameras. Offering up to 4K 60 frames per second stabilized video with a whole host of additional features for $399. Florida State Senator Linda Stewart has announced that a state grant valued at $75,000 has been secured for a pilot program to use drones to keep tabs on adults with Alzheimer's disease. Stewart shepherded the bill through the Florida State Legislature. This technology will help find people much faster than by foot, by car, even a motorcycle, she said. State Farm has been granted a waiver for drone operations that will be the first of its kind for an insurance company. The FAA waiver combines permissions for two types of operations that are typically tightly restricted, operations over people and flights beyond the operator's visual line of sight. These provisions are approved over four states impacted by Hurricane Florence. Together, they dramatically enhance State Farm's ability to evaluate hurricane damage and allocate resources. That was our Drone Minute, now back to the rest of the news. Mexico may institute new drone laws that will carry hefty fines for flying a drone without a license. Under current rules, infractions are considered civil matters. Luis Salazar, an official for the city of Amacuzac, said that Mexico's current drone regulations follow those established by the ICAO. Salazar said in an interview with Notimex 
that there is already a requirement to license drones, and that local drone regulations must be modified by December, when fines will be put into effect. Those fines could be high. Once the new regulations are published in the official gazette to the Federation, flying a drone without a license could cost the operator 403,000 pesos, or about 21,237 U.S. dollars and 50 cents. Salazar said the Directorate General of Civil Aviation puts drone pilots in the same category as the pilots of manned aircraft, because they occupy the same airspace. But he said it is not clear whether the aircraft weighing under 250 grams will require a license to operate. To obtain a drone pilot license in Mexico, the applicant must be 18 years old, Mexican by birth, take a flight course from a certified school, have a military release card, have completed high school, and be in good health. As of a few days ago, the FAA has issued nearly 50 special waivers for drone operations to support emergency and recovery efforts since Hurricane Florence made landfall. More than a dozen drone operators have flown an estimated 100 drone missions related to the storm under existing Part 107 authorization. The FAA granted the waivers on an expedited basis under a special governmental interest process for drone operators to fly response missions, which provide crucial benefits to the public good and address critical circumstances. The FAA also quickly turned on the agency's low-altitude authorization and notification capability. LANCE provides access to controlled airspace surrounding the airports through near real-time processing of airspace authorization below approved altitudes. For example, Wilson County, North Carolina, emergency responders were among the first to use drones for search, rescue, and recovery activities. In addition, major utilities are using drones to inspect power lines and insurance companies are conducting damage assessments. Also, North Carolina DOT is using the FAA's drone pilot program technology to support its drone inspection teams. FAA experts are also in both North Carolina and South Carolina emergency operations facilities. The FAA team is working with state and local authorities, as well as utility and insurance businesses to ensure overall coordination among parties and efficiently process waiver requests. Well, that's our program for this week. Airborne's AMA Drone Report is presented weekly in cooperation with the Academy of Model Aeronautics. And in addition to this program are Airborne Unlimited episodes covering the entire aviation and aerospace world are streamed on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday with additional breaking news bulletins for important stories that fall outside of our normal deadlines. If you're watching us on YouTube, please subscribe and do check us out on Facebook and Twitter. Get comprehensive, real-time, 24-7 coverage of the latest aviation and aerospace stories anytime at aero-news.net. And more information on the exciting hobby drone world at modelaircraft.org. We'll see you next week.